Okay, so we have the integral between zero and pi over two of one divided by tan of x to the power of the square root of 20, 20 plus one dx. Now this is actually a really hard integral. We can't use a u substitution. There isn't an easy and obvious way to do this. We're gonna use a strategy, which is essentially to try and rewrite this integral in terms of itself with some other constants. And then that allows us to not have to evaluate this integral directly. So you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, the first step, I'm just gonna recall, obviously the definition of tan is the ratio of sine of x and cosine of x. And this allows us to do some algebra. So we can rewrite this integral, uh, integral between zero and pi over two. And I'm gonna multiply this fraction by cosine, cosine to the power of this one, which is the square root of 20, 20. This is really arbitrary, the power doesn't matter here. So then tan simplifies just the sine with the same power. So square root of 20, 20 of x, and then the one turns to another cosine factor. So cosine to the power of 20, 20 of x dx. So now I'm gonna use a little trick. We have that the numerator is essentially the same as the denominator, except we're missing a factor of a sine. And this allows us to write this fraction as one minus and instead of the cosine on the top, we have a sine on the top. So we have sine to the power of square root of 20, 20 of x. And then we have the same denominator. So I'll just write sine, that's quite long-winded, square root of 20, 20 plus cosine, same power, 20, 20 of x, dx. And you can see if you think about multiplying the denominator with one, then we get a sine and a cosine, and then the sine cancels, and we're left with the cosine. So this is actually the same as the original. Uh, this line up here. And then we can just use linearity. So I can split these two terms and we have the integral of one between these limits, which is just gonna be pi over two. And then we're subtracting this integral of this term. So between zero and pi over two of all of this stuff, which I'm gonna rewrite. So sine to the power of 20, 20 of x with the same denominator, sine and a cosine with the same powers sine to the power of square root of 20, 20 of x, dx. So remember that our strategy was to try and rewrite our integral in terms of itself. And so we have that our integral is equal to this line. So we have the cosine and then the sine and the cosine on the bottom. And then we've got to this integral where instead of a cosine, we've got a sine on the top. So that's the only difference between this integral and this integral. And we're actually gonna show that this, these integrals are the same. Now the reason we can do this, it's very important that we have this limit, these limits between zero and pi over two. And the reason behind that is because we have these very nice relationships between sine and cosine. And these are that, they are essentially shifted graphs of each other. So we can write sine of pi over two minus x. This is equal exactly to cosine of x. And then we have a similar one for cosine. So cosine of this pi over two minus x is equal to sine of x. And this is very nice, kind of an intimate relationship between sine and cosine. They're essentially the same graph, they're just shifted, reflected slightly differently. So because we have these limits between zero and pi over two, we can try a substitution of exactly this, pi over two minus x. And then we can rewrite sines in terms of cosines and vice versa. So let's let u to be equal to pi over two minus x. That's essentially the same as x equals pi over two minus u, just swapping the x and the u. And then we're gonna need the derivative of u with respect to x. We have du, just differentiating the first line, is equal to minus dx. So let's try and use the substitution. I'm just gonna clear up some more space and then we'll carry on. So just to recap, we showed that our original integral is equal to this one using algebra. And then again, using algebra, we split this into two separate integrals, one which evaluated pi over two. And then we have this one, which is the same as this one, except we have a sine instead of a cosine. And then we're gonna use a substitution, which is u equals pi over two minus x, to try and rewrite the sines in terms of cosines and the other way around as well. So we've got a substitution and we can now go ahead and sub it in. So we have pi over two as our first term, minus the integral, so if we have u as pi over two minus x, then our new limits, if we put x is equal to zero into here, we get our lower limit is pi over two, and our upper limit, if we put pi over two into here, we get u equals zero. 
And this is why these limits are so important. We have this nice symmetry where if we use a substitution, the limits are just switched. And that's why we can do this method. And then we need to put it in. So we have a sine of the power of 20, 20. And we're just going to put in x as pi over 2 minus u. And then we'll do the same for the bottom. So we have cosine to this power of square root of 20, 20 pi over 2 minus u. And we've got the same for the bottom sine. So sine power of 20, 20 pi over 2 minus u. And then we need to replace the dx by minus du, just using this line here. So now we've done that, we need to use our relationships up here that we're talking about. So we can see that the, the sine of pi over 2 minus u, that's the same as cosine of u. And the same for the cosine, that turns to sine of u. So this is really nice. We have pi over 2 at the front minus. I'm actually just going to flip the integral limits here because we have the, the larger number on the bottom and we kind of want it the other way around. And remember to do that, we just multiply the whole integral by minus 1. And very conveniently, we have a minus 1 here in the du term. So if I bring this one to the front and make it uh, use that one to flip the limits, we have we still have the minus here. So we have the integral between 0 and pi over 2. And then as we're saying, the sine turns into a cosine. And now it's just u. And then the same for the bottom, we have sine. Cosine turns into sine. So you have square root of sine 20 of u plus cosine of 20 square root of 20, 20 of u. And this is a du factor now because we use the minus sign here to flip the limits. And now notice this integral is exactly the same as this one up here, except the x's are now u's, but it's exactly the same. And this is what we said was the same as our original integral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, define our original integral, I'm just going to call it i. So then all our workings out, what we've shown is we've shown that i equals pi over 2 minus i, which is really nice because we can solve this very simple algebraic equation without having to directly evaluate this integral. It's really nice. So this uh, leads us, so if I bring the i onto this side, we have 2i equals pi over 2. And this gives us our answer of our integral equals pi divided by 4. So this is the solution.